So when I talk about the how, I'm much more interested in the steps someone follows, the sequence someone follows that leads them to develop the kinds of problems that they have. So if you like, I can give you a pretty simple yes, example. Take something like an airplane phobia, somebody who is afraid of flying. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you have the, a very reliable strategy that people follow. You know, I do, up until the pandemic, I was flying almost every week of the year somewhere in the world. And for me, flying is a very comfortable experience. I get settled into a seat. And the first thought that goes through my mind is that for the next 14 hours, I don't have to take any phone calls or respond to any emails and I get to relax. And then I look across the aisle and hear somebody who is pounding down scotches and, and uh, they're obviously very, very anxious. And I, I used to get up and go over to them and ask them, mm -hmm. what are you doing inside yourself there that generates so much anxiety? And this is what I mean by the how. It wouldn't matter if this person was 70 years old or 20 years old. It wouldn't matter if they were a busy professional in a business suit or somebody who's you know, riding the waves as a surfer with just a bathing suit and a tank top on. Mm -hmm. the, the content isn't what mattered. Who it was didn't even matter. What mattered was they, they all shared the same process, the same how of they would picture themselves sitting in this airplane. They would picture the airplane taking off. Then they would visualize the wings falling off the plane and the plane going down in flames while everyone is yelling and screaming. And then there's just twisted metal and body parts all over the hillside. And then they have the internal experience as if all those images are imminent, as if those mm -hmm. things are really going to happen. And so that, that's the, the how someone generates an airplane phobia. And if you ask, well, why, why would somebody generate those kinds of images? It's certainly not based on past history. They've never been in a plane crash before. Yeah. It's, it's all about thinking about what could happen, what might happen, what may happen, and then responding to it as if it's going to happen because they don't have any particular skill in being able to distinguish what's possible from what's probable. And mm -hmm. so that, that's the how, for as long as anybody generates that kind of sequence of terrible images and places themselves right in the middle of it, they're gonna have an airplane phobia. One of the first lessons I learned from one of my greatest teachers and mentors was Jay Haley, who when I went into supervision with him to talk about cases I was working on uh, you know it's one of the first lessons he taught me was never define a problem in unsolvable terms and that's such an important lesson because we can easily make problems more complicated just by our own philosophies and interests or we can make problems simpler and easier to solve depending on mm -hmm. our perspective and I think that you know, it, it, over the course of the last 50 years of clinical practice, for me, therapy has become a simpler process rather than a more complicated one. And part of that is because the problems that people present are repetitive. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I hear the same problems over and over and over again. The names change and the faces change. And the circumstances change, but the, the way that the person generates the problem is pretty the much process. The yeah, it's the process. Yeah. To me, what hypnosis is about is a special type of relationship that involves a quality of focusing and introducing possibilities that uh, rely on personal factors, interpersonal factors, contextual factors that help mobilize hidden resources for the purpose of therapeutic change. If I was going to give just a short definition, <laughs> I would say it's a quality of relationship that encourages uh, people to discover hidden resources that can be directed for therapeutic change.
Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? I'm sure that you found a lot of information in this very short video you just saw, maybe like four or five, six minutes, however long it was. But that is not all. You can have access to the entire presentation of this amazing speaker, plus 40 more other presentations and speakers. And you can have access for life. You can have access to the video recording, to the audio recording, to the swipe files, to the transcripts, to all of the bonuses and special gifts that all of the speakers and presenters and also the organizers are offering in the premium pass package. So if you like this, if you want more, make sure to sign up below for the premium pass and have lifetime access to everything. I'm sure it'll be one of the best investments you've ever made in your life, in yourself, in your practice, in your health, and also with working with clients. So go ahead, click on the button below, sign up for the premium pass, and we'll see you on the other side.